Czechoslovakia, how's it going? Hey, hey. It's the July, it's Sexty Cat here. Drawing, uh, doing some talking and drawing at the same time. See, uh, I want to talk about some game design ideas and stuff. Right now I'm just designing, uh, Observateur. Which is, uh, more or less platforming game. So I've been designing it for a while, but producing very little of it, really. Um, but I think it's it's going to be better because of that that long design cycle. So a lot of the game, you're Lily, a magical cat. And you do combos to do these spells that will um, do various things in your environment. And mostly you're going about these huge sh federation ships. Uh, with a lot of decks and stuff like that. Little gateways in between them, ladders, equipment. And you go in and kind of like sabotage them or you're trying to sneak around. So it's kind of like a platformer, but you use spells and you're kind of Metal Gear Soliding it through these environments or like Hitman or something. And the scenarios will be kind of shorter scenarios to, uh, and then you kind of do these over and over again and, and learn their little nuances and stuff. So lately I've been thinking about, um, the protocols for the Federation ships. So those, that's the ship you'll most, those are the type of ships you'll mostly be inside of. And, uh. I'm kind of designing the Federation as it's like a organization like has a lot of ships and manufacturing and installations and a fleet and uh, they have a lot of they conquer a lot of areas and you kind of overthrow their power um, so you have to create an opening to get inside these ships and then you can kind of sneak in or you sneak in covertly um, or use spells to get inside um, but I've been thinking about how if, you, if you're aware of all the Federation protocols how the, basically the procedure that how they do things you should be able to figure out some methods to get past them so I'm gonna go to a new layer here Thinking like you're on a big something ship. Just kind of make it up. And, um, this is some kind of bridge, I guess. Some consoles. Some dudes. <laughs> They're very just duty. So there's like different ranks. You got your captain, you got your lieutenants, etc. Chiefs. And they have like their protocol for when something happens. So if they saw on their screen, there's, there's going to be cameras kind of on the ship. So if somebody identifies something strange on the camera, it's their duty to, to inform one of the officers. And basically, I want it to mechanically happen rather than like automatically, where probably a lot of games do. I kind of want the ship to be fully functional with its little members to, and give the proper delay that it needs to, for something to happen. So, in case you were fighting like a whole fleet of ships, they had to literally be running and functioning piece by piece, and engine pr property by weapon property. Um, by location X Y's of each of these guys, um, probably do the operations pretty slowly, like as far as programming it and stuff. But I just kind of want to think of ideas would be fun to give the player options. Make well, first off, make it semi-realistic with wh how their security systems work. Gated doors, cameras, 
and who to look where. But you also have to give them weaknesses, but um, in a way that a player can figure it out. Um, maybe you can knock out systems. Maybe if you know this protocol, you know if so a certain thing is happening, maybe there's an engine problem, then they delegate a certain sect of, the off of crewmen down to a different deck to take care of that so that arena is exposed in some way. Just stuff like that. Just little things. Um, so we want to talk more about the game. Um, so basically I'm having your main character as a, like, basically outnumbered, but she has these spells. She's a formidable spellcaster, but you as the player aren't practiced yet until you play a bunch of times and stuff and you kind of unlock new spells by going through the game multiple times so that gives you more options and I specifically want there not to be any overpowered spells um, I kind of want to make a lot of games that inspire me that where you have a lot of options to do one thing stuff maybe like Pikmin you replay Pik if you replay that game over and over again it's really cool how you see just a variety of routes you can take. It gives you all these options, but all these limiting factors too. So you just want to have the spells range over that kind of. If you just think of like tools rather than like raw force in a way. But they also kind of want to make them realistic where kind of the lore about the spells is that um, they're actual like regular things that are happening happening in the world are using magic like a thruster in, in an engine uses basically magic to thrust forward so there would be a spell that would be like force or something like that where you can maybe push an object or something but you don't want just that to be your only thing you want to do uh, I was thinking with doors there's kind of like a <clears throat> like Dungeons and Dragons thing, like knock or something like that. I'm not sure if I'm getting that right. But something that can like. Actually, I was, yeah, I think I was thinking about this like pierce. Like you could, you could use that to get inside. Um, a ship too. Um, and when you're doing a spell, so it's basically like a combo. You have nine different spells. Um which I don't know exactly what they are yet but you basically have to do the combo maybe you start w one set of the spell and it makes this wheel and with color the right colors and stuff they also correspond to different colors um, as you add each rune or arcana to this to the um, to the spell wheel it kinda adds that ball or shape to it and as it gets more complex it's kind of like orbitals of atoms or something but also this is spinning at a certain rhythm and you want to hit these on the right beat it's like DDR, Hatsune Miko or something like that um, maybe it's not 100% I don't know, I was thinking the spells you could literally write them like notation except instead of on a bar you just have the symbols and then you have kind of the no notation um, symbol to show in that beat one e and uh, um, when to hit that that key, and if anything, that just might the more accurate it is, the more powerful it would make your spell and stuff. Um, other spells to help you through. I don't know. It, it's, I'm trying to be very careful. You don't want to make anything over too powered and. Anything that's kind of like, I don't know, let's do a certain style. Like, I guess if we're just brainstorming, something like blind might be interesting. Or like a shroud. It's very like video gamey. Um, and this kind of has like a sci fi but also magical side to this game. And the sci fi universe is basically an invented one. Everything is in these like clouds, ether clouds that are very fluffy and thick and stuff. Um, I guess I could talk about more about that. I guess it's important. 
So basically the first there's a ground level but it's kind of hostile. And people go down there to mine and stuff like that. And special ships can go through. But it's underneath this like thick ether. So it's red down here and it's orange in this ether. It's almost like water, but it's super thick and gooey. But to work down here, you're underneath a dense amount of that when there's like creatures that float about it too so you gotta defend against the creatures um if you were to mine and transport stuff like this so this is like the very first layer of the of the world called Aegean um so then above that a lot of places kind of float about on these floating islands shoot that's really <laughs> awful <laughs> long stroke I could zoom out for that you only see it in 2D, really. The world pretty much exists mostly in 2D, too, which is just interesting to think about a lot of things in that way. They only show two dimensions of it. Um, but it impresses as something that has three dimensions. But anyways, these things float. They have little stabilizers. And, and they might m even mine from the orange. And a lot of these places are like outposts. So ships can park there and stuff. The ship might go into the ether. It's different. It, you you have to drive differently in in, in it. And there might be a little creature coming by. Kind of magical sea slash air kind of creatures. Like I said, it's kind of like a made up universe. I guess this kind of does resemble the sea, but everything is submarinable. But it's not exactly like the sea. Yeah. But there's kind of like a thing like oxygen too. So there's, so all these are colors, all the ether layers. So the rock in the bottom is the sturdy, sturdiest ether, which is red. And this is like slightly lighter, but still really thick, the orange layer. And then above this, there's clouds of yellow ether that kind of resemble kind of like clouds and electricity. And then you use the ether to make, to when you cast spells, you use that that color ether to do different things and then higher up basically there's like a layer the kind of like astral layer on the on four it's green but also kind of is oxygen basically then five is even higher but it might not even have a layer on the ether it might just kind of exist as um, five is light blue and then purple are the purple the kind of consciousness crystals that layer they kind of only exist like within beings it's kind of their core is this is this crystallized ether at the seventh level of purple and it kind of creates the center of each each humanoid in, in the game and each or they're all kind of anthropomorphic, but the cartoony kind of guys. So they, that's the core of their, their being. It's like their consciousness. And then um, they also have all the other layers inside of them. They kind of got to maintain them to survive, too. You need to have enough orange, which is like your water. You need to have red, which is like... Um, food. Um, yellow would be like your electri electrical systems. Four would be the oxygen. And then five would use less, but you use it for like communication and stuff. And basically, a lot of these concepts would help build the world. It's like fundamental lore. And I also want to use it <clears throat> in another game concept. I'm kind of co designing both of these games. They're kind of an extension of one another. And one thrust one into the other. So I'm first making the one player game called Observateur. They, they essentially live in the same universe, but I'm gonna make Aegean afterwards, so obviously it's gonna be a lot of changes. It's also a multiplayer game, so it can kinda have different things going on. But I basically just want a massive multiplayer game with an economy and a world. And so 
and everybody's on the same server kind of thing. So you'd have this this core of this world, there's all this red ether, and people. So now I'm talking about Aegean, which is a different game. This is the ma the massive multiplayer game, and so you're these anthropomorphic characters. And you don't really get experience points or anything like that, but you do, like, build relationships and gather machines and stuff like that. And it's kind of almost like, so you have, like, businesses, you might have, like, bots mine the, the earth for you. You might partner with a, a little shipping company who has, who ships stuff to the outer layers, which... Our facilities are distribution facilities, so individual humans, would, real people would own these, but first maybe quote-unquote androids would um, run them in the beginning, and these would just be in place to have a, a full, fully fleshed out eco economic system, economic ecology, before humans fill all the roles. Um, so they would just kind of be the, the placeholder, they would just have a program how to act like a person in running a business and you so you basically run real distribution businesses where you're maintaining your vehicles um, maybe have people drive for you or do transportation and that's just one aspect um, you have to mine from other stuff like mine up here there's like islands that eventually like float down and you can go exploring and find them and find new stuff that's anything that's added to the game would come in these kind of hidden aisles and maybe one person would find even like a like a blueprint to build a ship and then they could sell that blueprint because they found it so they'd be like dedicated explorers and maybe you like you make systems where people can become have their own uh, factions and have big uh, like militaries and stuff like that multiple ships a whole communication system territories that they're either pay them or that they bully to keep inside of their area and stuff. Um, so basically with this that in, in mind, this game that could exist is kind of the the, the um, base universe, base lore-verse for Observatur. Because Observatur has basically the same things, except you're only seeing a small area. In Observatur, you're on one island. Well, the... The main part of the game, I guess. <laughs> You're on just this one port island. You kind of get to see the very details of each person functioning in there and how how just the mechanics of the situation act upon everybody. And you have Observator, which is this like multi-dimensional time entity, which is being stored here by the Federation. And Lily knows that she has to find it. And so she, like, she boards a ship. She's kind of like a, what do you call those? Come on. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Stowaway. Yeah, she's a stowaway on this freighter ship. And so you start out, and you actually don't start off as Lily. You start as this kind of observer, little sprite thing that can kind of see what's going on. It can slightly influence with a little bit of energy. Um... And you just see her trek through the town. You don't have to follow her. You can also see what the dynamic in the town is already. And um, basically help her get to obs Observator, which unlocks the dreams. Um, so basically, um, as you play the game, there's kind of like these levels. And um, I think, I guess there's like four is it four? Something like that. And these bring you to different scenarios. This is the singularity. This is where like all the streams stem from, which is this town area when Lily is arriving. So you can basically unlock different time streams by being in this area and then dip into the future of that time. So first is kind of like the bad future that you would see by default when this town section ends and Lily basically doesn't get what she's looking for um, the bad future is her <laughs> that's the timeline but you unlock a different timeline that's actually occurring from there this is the um, the kind of hope 
the kind of just the, the first dream you could call it and it's Lily inside the island underground she finds a way to get underneath and um, she get meets up with observator but she's also uh, but you so you can that would be like if you get into observator that would like be the good end for that dream but you can also just steal Sam's ship and fly off and then you get tracked down to the Federation and you can go far in that area, but you're not that powerful yet. And it might seem kind of hopeless. This might be kind of even confusing. But it's kind of just the... It's just the beginning of the game. It's just to kind of show you her fragility a little bit and what she's looking for and you kind of connect with it. Um, it's more or less... This, more or less this is Act 1. The singularity is Act 1. And then that... Where you're going around the town is a sprite. And then Act 2... You're still on the island, but you're underground. And it's a dream of a future, a different future. As you do something else in the town, um, it unlocks the, the second dream, which is Act 3. <laughs> um, that's the, um, that needs a new drawing here. That's a complex dream, and I guess I'll, I'll explain what I have so far. Um, so, you you are Lily becoming one with Observator, and um, Observator is like this entity that lives on different plane, but it's connections to all these timelines, and that's basically how you're seeing all these different timelines. It's through kind of through Observator in a way. It's connected. Um, so as she combines with him, she can kind of go to multiple places through the little the observers. And through her friends, she can kind of see what they're seeing and control them. So as the player, you're just toggling through different scenes that are all happening at the same time. It's basically like a multi-pronged action to totally overthrow the Federation completely. But you have a lot of power this time. Even as Lily, um, with Observatory, you have a lot of magic. You can wield magic much more easily. Um, I think... I think you wouldn't even need to do combos. I think you. Um, but she has to be in one place. She's combining with Observator, and they take over the island and make it their. It's kind of like the shell, the pupa, for Observator to to be like more. It kind of takes over the island completely. It's like a plant. It acts like a plant with these like vines and stuff like that. Um, and it looks kind of, just kind of a creepiness. I want to add to it. Where she's like getting this power, but it's kind of like mysterious and kind of freaky, freaky a little bit. Um, and you have Charles, who's helping you too. He's a big old dragon, magical guy, but he's mostly sleeping in the town section of the game. But finally, he's awake and he's like, he's casting spells and stuff like that against giant ships. So the, f so there's like a distraction force against the Federation. Which is Joyce or Macy inside this like crazy magical ship. It's like really nimble and small, but it's, it, she's using this to distract like a whole fleet along with Charles while um, Sam is trying to get all these androids. Um, like, in fact, he. he Infecting all these androids and loading them up onto a ship to invade the Federation essentially with this army And that's like the main thing they're trying to accomplish The Federation has all these androids inside like a facility And through Observator can like the Observator can um hook up with electronics and like connect with them and con and beings too and that's what it's doing with Lily it's kind of blending the dif difference between her and it and she kind of becomes lost in it. And she, it's kind of where you are in this game. You're lost in time, lost in your own awareness, and kind of like repeating the past, repeating the memories, and kind of from unawareness bringing some awareness. Um, so you're kind of the Lily Observator combo is kind of who you as the player are. Um, is there anything else to that scene? And Sam is in the. Sam's a bird. He's a Federation guy. He's kind of your inside guy. He can he'll be like in a very important place 
where you can overhear the plans of the Federation. And so basically in this dream, you're toggling because you're the super consciousness, Lily, and you could toggle between these different players and influence what they're doing. And so you have to like multitask is kind of the name of the game. It's kind of like StarCraft. The better multitasking you can do, but also it's supposed to be super duper hard too. It might think you might the player might think this is the final part of the game. But as you do the final thing in, in the dream, you unlock I mean the into the main town part, you'll you like you will unlock the final act. Um, so there's like a tone with all these dreams. The the main island, the singularity is uh I think mundane and ordinary is kind of the is the tone because everybody's just doing their ordinary life and they're kind of like sad they're kind of like they're not going anywhere in life they're kind of stuck by the federation in a bad econ economic situ situation sort of um uh and in dream one you're underground and this one's kind of like you're starting to see the mysteries so you get the tone of the ordinariness of, of regularity and now as you're playing this one you get you're kind of peeking into the unknown seeing stuff like taking over the ship um, seeing that Lillian can do all this kind of stuff and um, you're trying to find observator in that dream um, so let's look down to here in the second dream is a crazy one they're just multitasking and it's just all the pieces are have to come together and it's it's like showing the full potential the full power of observatory with lily and showing how badass that is and the final act is different kind of another cold tone but this one should be really depressing everybody like this is, this is the way future this is like the worst future where observ observatory basically takes over everything um Everything is like these zombies. Um, everybody's kind of like a hive mind. Like they're all connected to Observator and they can only act. It's basically controlling everything. And so it's like watching your every move. You're, you're enclosed in somewhere and Charles comes and embraces you loose and kind of sacrifices himself to give you a ship. Like a very weird ship. It's like part organic. Charles would normally, he's a big guy, he'd normally be in the middle or something like that and like it connects with him in a certain way or something but Lily can't do that or something and she has to like do weird things to control the ship. I'm not exactly sure but I think I have sails too. Um, and you're kind of going dark, you're trying to stay hidden away from all the eyes of Observatory which are everywhere and they might go on your ship and try to mess with things and you need to like look on cameras and, and keep your ship alive while you're very alone it's kind of like a very empty alone act and but you finally in that dream get to the get to like the core of observator which is probably like massive now it has all these just random pieces of every of machinery of islands that are just kind of in stasis around it just like empty um and you're traversing it maybe with your you and um, while you're flying there, everybody's telling you not to connect, reconnect with Observator. It's, it's like for some reason you're separated, but you're going, str you're trying to get to Observator and reconnect and kind of retake over. Um, I guess I could say what the ending is for now, but I, I, I just, this is kind of already a lot of <laughs> lorry bits, kind of deep bits. Everything's subject to change, but that's probably enough to tell about that. But, uh, yeah, still heavy into, into the design of it. Honestly, I know I'm capable of programming. It's not that difficult. It just really is a matter of just creating the content piece by piece and, and just putting it together. But it's been pretty fun, the design. Let me know if any of this stuff interests you. If you'd like to hear more or anything, be happy to.